Hi, this is your coach, Joe Lucas, and welcome to your Practice a Power Academy podcast. First off, welcome to 2017. I hope you had a great holiday season. And uh, since this is our first podcast of a brand new year, let's, let's take this time and really talk about how to get off to a great start this year. Because let's face it, momentum is key to all success in any industry, in any endeavor, and more, and no more important than it is here in our financial services world. So let's talk about a couple different items in terms of how you're coming into 2017. Uh, you know, really what I have found, uh, you know, in this industry, you're coming into 2017 in one of three different scenarios. Scenario number one is you had a great 2016. Uh, you crushed it, you killed it, right? And there's maybe a part of you that's sitting there saying, man, how, how am I going to do that again? How am I going to top this, right? And so, you know, you got to continue to elevate, continue to go forward, continue to uh, uh, raise your own standards, right? Continue to take action. The second scenario is that, you know, you may have had an okay 2016, you know, so it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't what you really wanted. And, you know, you really got to look at that and say, okay, what went well? What didn't go well? You know, wh where do I need to improve in my own performance, because let's, let's have this quick conversation before I get to number three. This is never about your business. Here's the truth. Your business right now is a current reflection of your past psychology. And what I mean by past psychology, I mean your beliefs, what you think is important, your habits, your behaviors, you know, cause and effect, right? So you got to really look at that. So it's not about let's go get another marketing program or we need to get our CRM. And I mean, those things may be uh, it's somewhat part of a recipe, but they're never going to be the key ingredient of the recipe. Now, the third one is that, you know what? For whatever reason, 2016 was just not your year. And, you know, we're not going to get into it because it's in the books, right? We can't change it. But here's what you've got to decide. Am I going to let my past dictate my future? So no matter how bad it was, no matter what obstacles you had, no matter how you may have sabotaged yourself, the reality is that you've got a fresh start. See, in, in all three situations, in all three scenarios, you really have a blank sheet of paper to build or to prove it again. And that's, as we get into January here, that's the decision you need to make, is what am I going to stand for in 2017? It's so important. So let's also talk about January, because I find January to be a, you know, a very unique month, not because it's month number one of a new year, but because it has some unique characteristics that we want to take advantage of in order to get off to a great start, or what I call sometimes getting out of the blocks, right, if you're a runner. So number one is, and this is important, not that January 1st is some hard, fast date, but do you have your business plan done? Do you have your goals? Do you have whatever it is you do, right? So whatever it is that you, you know, if it's a one, if it's one sheet of paper, right? And, and I write down 10 things I want to accomplish and, and that kind of works for you. Hey, I'm not going to argue the fact, but if it doesn't work for you, find something else, right? Now in Practice Power Academy, we have an eight module business planning process. So you may want to take a look at that. So number one, what's your plan? And when I talk to my clients and I've been doing that all this week and I'll continue for the next several weeks. I don't care about the revenue. I don't care about the production. Here's what I care about. I want to know about their habits and rituals right now. Because here's what happens. You know, for a lot of us, you know, December comes and, you know, we've been pushing all year, trying to make our goals happen, trying to get things to, 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 to be accomplished. And wham, then the holidays hit, right? And you know, a lot of us kind of just back off. You know, I mean, I did. I literally took a week and just uh, distracted myself with doing some projects around the, around the homestead here. And, you know, the first thing I said was when I was ready to get back reengaged is, okay, where's my morning ritual? I've got to make sure I build that the way I need to build it, right? It's got to be solid, rock solid. In fact, I've improved some things this year, and I'll share with you uh, on another video about it. Number two, do I have my daily game plan? You know, am I, am I set to go, right? So am I organized? And I mean, and not just the physical space, but mentally am I organized, right? Do I have my goals, my business plan? Do I have my morning ritual intact, right? Do I have my written daily game plan? I care more about the habits and rituals with my clients than I do about their production. Because you know what? Production doesn't matter because what's happened is going to happen. 
But if you don't get your habits built out and locked in early January, guess what? You're gonna, you run the real risk of a repeat of the previous year, of the previous year, and the previous year. And that's probably not what you're seeking. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing we talk about is what do we do in January? What's our, what's our, game? What's our priority in the month of January? To me, it's very simple. January has to be your heaviest contact month of the entire year. And let me explain why. Number one, people, all human beings, or most human beings, I should say, do this thing called a reevaluation come the new year, right? Reevaluation, right? Resolutions, right? And so what happens is that, you know, the average human being, average, is in, in the most motivated natural state of the year and they're most open to change versus any other time of the year in the month of January. And, you know, studies have shown this. This is why health clubs get full, right? And, and people start budgets and, and, you know, people start diets and nutrition and you see all, the, all those other industries, right, kind of pushing on all that because they know that, hey, this is when it's, it's a lot easier to get a yes, so what you need to do is, first off, call all your clients. And I mean all of them, from AAA, AA, all the way down, you know, go as deep as you can, right, this month, and say basically this, or leave a message. Hey, happy 2017. Hope you had a great holidays. Uh, let me know if you have any new financial goals, anything we need to discuss. Uh, by the way, if you ran across somebody through the holidays, we'd love to have an opportunity to help other people like yourself. Give me a call back. Look, welcome to 2017, right? Or something like that. Just a, they need to hear your voice and welcome them into the new year. And no, you cannot do a letter. And, and be, I know some of you say, well, let me just kind of hide behind my, uh, you know, I'll put a system together for that. Remember, you're in a personal relationship business. Yes, you get paid by assets under management and product and planning fees and all that. But at the end of the day, you're in the personal relationship business. Relationship, personal, right? That is not a social media wall, okay? And we'll talk about social media another time. You need to call everybody. Now, on the other side of the call list, right? So those are, you know, for most of us, those are the easy ones, right? On the other call list are the prospects, the pipeline. And, you know, some of you may have hundreds, and I understand that may be a tall task, so prioritize, right? But it's really the same conversation, Welcome to 2017. How are your holidays, right? You know, you want to find out, hey, are you ready? Are we ready to sit down and start work together? Are we ready to get together? Are, we, are, are you willing to? Are you open to re-engaging, right? Because, again, if you met with somebody and for whatever reason you didn't get over the hump and it happens, this is the time to check to take their temperature again. And you cannot do it with, you cannot do it with an email. Well, I guess you can in some cases. You definitely cannot do it with a letter. So don't think that I'll just send a letter out and I'll put my newsletter out or I'll tweet something. You know, unless your marketplace is millennials, which most times don't have any money, then the tweeting is not really that important, right? The uh, Facebook is not really that important. Human connection. So here's what I want you to remember. This is, and this is why I was thinking about this over the holidays. You know, I took my little sabbatical, right, and kind of get away, got away from everything. I really thought about this. And I said, you know, is this whole social media thing, when we look at it, because you know, everybody's like, man, we, I need to get this, I need to get that. I mean, I have a few, but let's be very clear. It's rare yet that a, a LinkedIn profile, um, uh, you know, tweeting, all that jazz, get your phone to ring with opportunities, right? Now, there are a lot of consultants out there that are running around, you know, kind of expo you know, espousing these things as like, hey, you got to get this done, got to get this done. And, you know, I look at my client base and look, and I've got clients in their late 20s all the way into their mid-70s, right? I mean, I, got, I got everything. And when we look at where our clients come from this past year, right, which is the latest data, I mean, it, it's such a small percentage, right? So I start thinking to myself, is all this just noise? Because if you're going to build a social media big back, back business and you're an individual advisor or a small team, Here's what we got to think about. When it starts to work, what's going to happen? The big players with the big budgets, and the and, and you know they can they can drive all the cost per click and drive all that up and just have these things. Man, they're going to they can they can just swamp you, right? 
And that's why let's, I'm not saying don't do it, but don't use it to say to yourself, hey, I don't need to call people, I don't need to reach out, I don't need to have that human touch because I tweet or I blog or I do this or I do that. It never takes the place of human interaction. Now, I mean, 20, 30, 50 years, but 2017, no. And you need to really make sure that you're not distracting yourself from what really needs to be done by getting all caught up in this other stuff. Again, I'm not, I'm not sitting there saying, hey, don't do it, but just don't do it instead of, right? Think of it as a way to augment something. Think of it as another messaging channel, not a way to message, period, okay? So I just wanna make sure, so again, contacts, your habits and rituals, right? We wanna make sure that we're absolutely locked in on that. And then figure out what your plan is for 2017. And then the other thing I want to say, and you know, now I'm going to get a little random here. I guess it's uh, I guess I had a little coffee this morning. You know, one of the things you got to think about, and I give this a lot of thought myself, is honesty. And I don't mean telling the truth to other people and all that. I mean with yourself. You know, can you really look in the mirror and say, here's, here's, where, I'm, here's, where, you know, here's what I'm really happy about? But then more importantly, say, you know what, here's some things that I've been hiding from, that I've been, you know, kind of a distract, you know, kind of not, not dealing with, right? And be able to sit there and say, you know what, I'm going to handle this. I'm going to do the work. So here's the theme for 20, you know, I always come up with a theme, right? So here's the theme for 2017. I want you to make 2017 the year you do the work. And I don't know what that means for you. Going to the gym watching what you put in your mouth, making the calls, getting organized, getting uncomfortable. You know, uh, as Brian Tracy said, let's go eat the frog first, right? Whatever it is for you, make 2017 the year of doing the work. I can put a word in between that, but I won't. We keep this PG, right? That's what I want you to do, okay? And last thing real quick, is, you know, I've been, I've been blessed and privileged. I'll be coming into year 24, uh, February 1st, which I'm really excited about. I can't, where did, where, I don't know where the years go, quite frankly. Um, and I just want to say that you don't have to watch me. You don't have to listen to me. Uh, you know, when I started, I was, I was one of maybe two or three voices in our entire industry. Now there are hundreds, if not thousands of, I guess, well, I'll call them loosely my colleagues, right? And, and, and I just want to say this. You need a coach. You need a partner. You need somebody to work with. And this is not a, this is not an advertisement for me. But I will say this. To me, coaching is about personal relationships. Your coach needs to give a crap about you in the highest way. Not some program and system. I mean, that's, that means like training. The difference between coaching and training are the personal aspects. See, coaching now is a nice word. Right? Oh, I'm a coach. I'm this. A lot of coaches are, are mediocre consultants, uh, managers who have gotten let go by firms, and now they reinvent themselves as a coach. And, but they're managers. And you know, I don't manage people. I lead people. I coach people. There's a big difference. So my point is this. When you're going to find somebody, and you need to find somebody this year, Make sure that you resonate with them on a personal level. You've got to drink the Kool-Aid. And if you don't drink that person's Kool-Aid, it's not the right person for you. And look, we, I turn down probably two-thirds of the people that come into me, not because I'm mean or harsh or anything like that. In talking to them, hey, look, you're just, I'm not, I'm not your flavor. It's just, I mean, I, it's just not, right? And I'll refer them out to one of my other coaches or things like that. I'm totally cool with that, right? But I know who to work with and who not. You also need to know who you need to work with or not. It's fascinating. The people that won't engage in, in I don't even want to say getting help, because that's, I know that's for our egos, like, well, I don't need any help. That's bull. You need a lot of help. The people that come and hire, that want to hire me are the ones that don't need my help in a lot of ways. They want, they're good to great, right? The people that really need the help, you never hear from them because they're too busy blaming other people. So the one thing I want to ask yourself is, are you, are you going to take personal responsibility? Hey, look, you know what? Like I said, your current situation, your past psychology, your past habits, you know, past everything. 
You know, it, it, it's, it's like, here's the results of what that looks like. So don't sit there and say to yourself, well, I'm just going to do better this year, or I'm going to do more of something. That's, you know what, what does that mean exactly? Could you quantify that? Could you measure it? Because if you can't, guess what? It's a concept. And what it turns into is another broken promise to yourself. So just keep that in mind. And I also want to wish you nothing but the greatest of success in 2017. You know, look, I understand our industry, there's a lot, you know, forever, right? Um, there's always noise. You tell me when you, you've ever woken up in our industry, and I don't care if you've been in this thing for two years or 40, 50 years, where you said, you know what, we are just in perfect conditions. You know, the economy is great, the markets are great, the regulators are great, compliance is great, you know, everything's great, right? So in other words, you'd have to be a little, literally an idiot not to be successful. Uh, you know, when has that been the case? Remember, there's always going to be something out there. And quite frankly, as I told my, and again, if you're a client of mine, you know this. We are entering the greatest period now in our entire profession because we have two forces that are happening simultaneously that will never be repeated. And here they are. Number one, a lot of our colleagues are going to be leaving the industry. Time for them. They've, done a, they've had a great run. But hey, look, uh, follow time is undefeated, right? So they're going to go, and it's fine. Simultaneously, all the boomers are going to be retiring. So you're going to have these two forces of less competition and more opportunity. And yet some people walk around saying, oh, man, this is so hard to do. I, I, I don't get it. Because they're looking, because they're not looking in the right places. They're focused on DOL and Washington DC and, and the firms and all this stuff and pay cuts and all that. Hey, if you don't like your situation, change it. Don't whine about it. Because when you whine, you give yourself an excuse not to be successful. So I hope we start off the year in a great way. I'm happy to be with you. It's a, you know, I love doing these things. I, I haven't done them in a while. And, and you know, I woke up this morning, I said, you know what? I'm going to get back to these because I, I really have a lot of great messages. You know, I'm always learning and, and I love giving back to this wonderful profession. You know, this, you know, being a coach for almost a quarter century now, I mean, it, it's given me a tremendous life and the ability to impact a lot of people. And, and I'm grateful for that. So have a great couple days. You know, hope to see with you, hope to be with you soon. And uh, thanks for watching or thanks for listening. And uh, I'll see you again uh, very soon. Thanks for watching or listening.